Well, it seems like even Olympic gymnasts don't flip as much as Dwight Howard does. But it's more than just adrenaline that'll help you win in this game. It's also about teamwork, like any other sport. But it's really no different than facing any other challenge in life. It only requires getting in and taking that first leap. And after suffering a loss to the Astros Saturday, there was just a bit more pressure on Texas to leave their fans happy before hitting the road. A&M says during the weekend of the Missouri game, they sold about 500 of these number two jerseys and about 300 of these t-shirts. Coach Lee Fedor and company were out to answer that question last night at Merrill Green Stadium down in Bryan. In the wild, a Mustang is known for its speed and power, and today the same can be said on the hardwood, with the Mumford Mustangs running San Augustine out of the building. Well, if there's ever a time you're going to forget something you learned in school, it's usually going to happen over the summer. That's why my grandmother always had me do those math problems during summer visits. But it's the motivations of Aries that keep them going. The Troy Trojans are knocking on State's door. And you can thank a healthy and sometimes bizarre sense of humor for their postseason run. Most of the time, I don't have any idea what they're doing, which is we're probably better off that way. Uh, you know, I hear a lot about animals and all kinds of other stuff, so I, I probably really don't want to know too much about it. It makes the game a lot more fun. It makes it easier to withstand a seven or maybe even more a longer game. And perhaps the weirdest prank is what hangs from the ceiling of the Trojans' locker room. They haven't lost since it made an appearance. Maybe around tournament time. I think that's might have when it gone up or halfway through district somewhere in there. I've had to tell them to take it down once. It started dripping some, some uh, crazy juice out of it. I'm not sure what the deal is with the banana, but hey, it's working, so we leave it there. A team of pranksters, jokers, and comedians might be a handful for some coaches. But for the staff at Troy, that's a winning combination. We really know when to, you know, stop it, when to like, when to cut loose and when to uh, not really take so many pranks and like get focused on things. Being funny while being focused. The Trojans hope that is a roadmap to state. I think we often kind of owe it to ourselves here to get the thing done and get the job done and go win it. In Troy, Texas, Lane Fobbs, ABC 40 Sports. The Southeast Conference has had some pretty big stars over its history. Joe Namath, Bo Jackson, and Tim Tebow, just to name a few. But you could argue that given the worldwide instant news Twitter-based world that we now live in, Johnny Manziel is now the biggest name in SEC history. Johnny, widely popular and highly controversial. He was arrested last season, for at the beginning of last season, before having a phony license, and this year he was reportedly kicked out of the Manning Family Passing Academy for showing up late to meetings due to a need to party. Now, some say he's just a 20-year-old kid having fun in college, while others say he needs to grow up. We can argue that all day, but here's what some SEC coaches and players had to say about Manziel's actions. Well, he's always in the spotlight. Um, he's always in the spotlight. <laughs> he's, obviously, he won the, he won the Heisman Trophy, so that's what comes with it. Uh, he had a great year, um, and that's all I'm going to say on that subject. You're totally responsible for the young man, and it's a continual education for young people. When they have poor judgment, then I step in and, and, and decide what the punishments are going to be and what the consequences are going to be. And we have consequences, and we have discipline in our program. I mean, yeah, sure, he hangs out in certain places or, you know, does things, but everyone has their own thing, and it's tougher on him. He's in the spotlight because he did win the Heisman um, as a freshman, and he did have so much success, so there's going to be a lot more criticism, a lot more eyes on him. Some football? You'll have it in about two weeks. The Dallas Cowboys play the Miami Dolphins August 4th for the preseason Hall of Fame game. But first, the boys need a little training. And they got some today with their first practice out in Oxnard, California. Cowboy fans are tired of the average play in their team. And, hey, Jer Jerry Jones, the owner, agrees with you. Going into his 25th training camp as owner, Cowboy the Cowboys have won just one playoff game since 1996. We're talking the Bill Clinton administration. Jones, the front office, and the coaching staff are well aware of this. And after an 8-8 eight and eight 2012 campaign, they feel it's time to shake things up with a better mix of players. 
If you think about the core group of players we have, some of these veteran players who have been around here for a while and been really good players for us, and then you add this younger tier of players, a Tyron Smith, a Bruce Carter, a Mo Claiborne, a Brandon Carr, uh, Sean Lee, uh, you add that to the mix, you feel like there's a good combination where we are with our roster right now. All right, let's hit the diamond now. The Rangers have struggled mightily out of the All-Star break. After dropping two straight Friday and Saturday, they need a win today to avoid a sweep at the hands of the Baltimore Orioles. Hey, there's Texas dancing. Let's see if they have this much fun at the end of the game. Not too much fun at the beginning, though. Top two, Matt Wieters, RBI up the middle. And that's going to bring around Chris Davis for the first run of the game. And I tell you what, the Orioles must love hitting balls up the middle. There's another one from Manny Machado. Brian Roberts, there he is. He's going to come around to score. And that's how the Rangers were swept on a Sunday. 4-2, the final from Arlington. Hey, let's check in on the Astros. They're hoping to avoid a sweep as well. They're taking on the Seattle Mariners. You know, uh, pitcher Jordan Lyles is going to be great one day, maybe just not today. Because he gave up that grand slam to Nick Franklin. 7-0, and it's just the second inning. And why not? Let's beat a dead horse, right? Kendris Morales, RBI up the middle. It's an up the middle theme, right? That's going to bring around Raul Ibanez, bring him on home, and the Astros drop another one. Not exactly breaking news. 12-5, the final in Houston. Last stop, the British Open's final round was today. There's Tiger Woods. He couldn't quite get things going. Check this out. The ball sails over the green and into the bunker. Cue the Tiger Woods struggle face. He shot a 74-3 over in the final round. Meanwhile, Lee Westwood, there he is. He was your leader going into Sunday, but not today after that bogey on the par 3-7. He finished at four over. That leaves Phil Mickelson. There he is winning the 2013 British Open Championship, his first career victory at the Open, shooting an incredible five under in the final round. And Adam, for the last time, that's a look at your sports. Birdman, Birdman. He has a catchphrase all his own, and he's helping the Miami Heat to the NBA Finals. But through it all, Chris Birdman Anderson still calls the Brazos Valley home, growing up in nearby Iola, Texas. Being in all athletics, every sport out there, you know, obviously basketball was the main one and, and uh, really worked out for me. Rob Stewart was Birdman's coach at Iola. He may coach at Oak Ridge High School in Conroe now, but he'll never forget the first time he met Anderson as a freshman during an open summer gym. I mean, he was getting there and blocking shots, and he was getting rebounds. He go, hey, come here, what, what's your name? He goes, Chris Anderson. You're gonna go to school in Iowa? He goes, yeah. He turned around and walked away. I was like, yes. <laughs> Chris Anderson stays close to Iola and close to Coach Stewart. They communicate daily. Through a drug suspension in 2006 and being cut by the Denver Nuggets last season, Birdman can always count on his hometown coach for guidance. It gives me insight on what I, what I need to adjust to or you know, what I need to improve on or you know, what I'm doing wrong. You take, you take any kind of criticism from your head coach that you, know, you grew up with. Birdman's Iola family loves him, and so does his new one the Miami Heat. Just the way he's fit right in since he's been here, I mean, it's, uh, it's been great. He's, uh, he brings a lot of energy. Um, his finishing around the rim is uh, spectacular. Defensive uh, uh, impact on the floor, um, you know, bringing us energy. That big truck that he drives kind of let us know, you know, he's from a small little country town, but, you know, uh, he got a big city swag, so we're happy to have him. No matter the style, the hopeful NBA champion will never forget his local roots. Brian College Station, Anderson, Navasota, Norman G, North Zulch. Being around that area, I wouldn't have traded for the world. There are seven NBA championship banners that hang in Texas, and four are right here in San Antonio. But if Birdman, the local Brazos Valley guy, has his way, the Spurs won't be getting number five.